Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a uh, next continuation of my series on my Baz Fuss build. Now, uh, to this point, I have pretty much built something similar to the stock circuit, and I've messed around with a lot of what I'm going to call the default or stock modifications. Mostly those that are listed on the home record site, where you're basically taking the circuit as is, but you are tweaking component values to taste. What I'm going to explore in this video is a little bit more of like a creative offshoot where I'm going to kind of take this as a starting point, but then I'm really going to deviate and go ahead of that. I'm going to try to be a little bit creative and design something here. Now, I'm not a professional pedal designer. I've never really done this before, uh, but what I'm basically doing here is taking elements from different circuits that I think are well known and well beloved and I'm going to try to put them together to make a box that's a little bit more useful. Let's take a look basically uh, to give you my spoiler up front. My idea is to combine three pedals into one. And what was the what the three pedals I'm talking about is the Baz Fuss, second is the LPB1 booster and third is the Electra Distortion. Uh, this weekend I had some chance to look through some different schematics and I was specifically looking for schematics that utilized transistors kind of in a pretty simple straightforward design. So one or two transistor type circuits. And um, these three circuits are all similar from the perspective that they all have one transistor at the heart. And you're basically just modifying the circuit in a little bit of a different way each time. Okay, so this is my thought. Here's our Baz Fuss diagram. Now, in order to, I'm going to take these mods one at a time. So first is how can we turn the Baz Fuss into just a straight up boost? Um, and I think it all kind of centers around this diode right here. Now, what's happening is I understand the diode is doing two things. And this, all, this is a little bit of a technical, further, better explanation after my research. So the circuit's coming in here. We've got a capacitor. I think I'm using something big like 2.2 UF. And that capacitor is helping to decouple. So we've got this DC voltage here that could be traveling back into our guitar. So we're stopping that. And then second, we're also helping provide a little bit of tone shaping. Now 2.2 UF is a pretty large value so almost all of the low end is coming through but if you reduce this to like you know something more like 100 or 0 .001, 0 0.0001 that's going to start to shave off base if you would so desire. But um, then after that we come to this point where we've got one end of a diode and then we've got our transistor. Now what's happening is the signal comes in here to the base of the transistor and the guitar is presenting a very small amount of voltage. So when you play, when you strum your guitar, you generate a very, very small voltage. And that voltage travels into the bass here, and it goes this way, flows downstream. You can see this, this marker here um, inside the transistor that in indicates that it's, that's the way it's flowing. Okay, well then you also have this 9-volt current, or 9-volt voltage, it's coming from your battery or your power supply that's coming in through a dropping resistor into the collector of the transistor. So that's a larger voltage. And as I understand, that's also going to be trying to flow downhill this direction. And those two things are going to try to generate some equilibrium with one another. And so, um, as I understand, when you play your guitar and you generate a little bit of voltage, this guy has to increase to match so, it, so it's not becoming off-kiltered with one another. And so that's how the amplification occurs. So then going out this way, your signal gets amplified because this, this, you know, this collector is trying to keep up with what's going on here at the base. So it amplifies the signal, flips the phase. You've got another capacitor here, which again provides the same kind of coupling. Again, so because you've got this DC here, you don't want to send DC out into your amplifier. So you, you use the capacitor to decouple it. It also provides a little bit of tone shaping. Then you go to your volume control and you go out. Well, 
at this same point you've got this signal which just got amplified, then it has a path to go back this way. That's called negative feedback. Negative meaning it's going backwards in the circuit. It's feeding back into a prior point. Now, this is strange because it's being done by a diode. And what the diode is doing is two things. First of all, it's helping provide bias to the base. So this DC voltage will go through our diode and it'll help bias the base. And then second, it will also clip the signal because of, uh, think of a diode like a one-way valve. So if your signal is coming in like this, you got positive, all the positive waves are up here on top of the middle line, all the negative waves are down here. So a diode, you know, one of the things it will do is it will, um, once the certain voltage is reached, it'll clip, it'll stop. You know, so it might say all these negative guys down here, you guys don't get a go, and it's going to try to fill them in. Or, you know, that, that some of that is coming from my understanding of tube rectifiers, you know, rectification in a guitar amp circuit. So, same type of idea here where it's providing clipping. If you compare this Baz Fuss with this schematic, this schematic is an LPB1 booster from Electroharmonics. You can see for the most part it looks very very similar. You've got this guy here. Now this resistor is more of like a quality of life resistor. It's one meg. It's there so that if you press on the foot switch any kind of popping noise will get filtered to ground. So you could you could you could put that in up with your Baz Fuss. It wouldn't be a problem. It's not a bad addition to think about uh, to avoid any popping. But then the big difference I think is Let's forget it. You know, this in this area because if you look at the rest of it, there is a resistor here, and I actually included this resistor in my Baz Fuss, and you can also turn this into a pot to make this a gain control. But I included a very low amount of resistance. I think I might have even done less than 390 ohm, just to help give it keep it a little bit more stable. Um, but then up here, you've got your bi your resistor that's helped come bringing in the bias voltage from the 9 volts. You get your coupling cap, you get your volume control. So it's almost exactly the same. Except for in this area, you've got a large 1 meg resistor that's coming from your 9 volts to help bias the base of the transistor. So it's kind of, this is kind of from a similar perspective, right? If you think about this diode, it's, it's really kind of functioning similarly to this resistor here, except there's no clipping that's occurring, and some of that too is the location of the resistor in the circuit. But then this guy right here, this resistor, um, is included here, whereas it's not included on this side. So I think if I use this switch, a double pole, double throw switch, I've got a video that I just made that it would explain switches. I want to use one side of the switch to, in, to switch between the one meg resistor going up here to the nine volt power supply and then the other side to, to put this diode in place. So what I think I'm going to do, if I go back up to my bass fuss, if I put this point in the switch to go to this middle lug here then when I go up, I'm going to send the diode, oh, and the other side of the diode is going to connect right there. And when I go down, this lug right here is going to include is going to instead be this one meg resistor that's going to go up here. I'm going to use the double th double throw or double pull because I need on the, on the Baz Fuss. You can see there's nothing here, whereas in the boost circuit. So, so what I'll have here is I'll have one side of the switch, the same side of the switch that's that's using this one meg resistor. I'm going to include this resistor here from base to ground. And then the other side will just be blank. So basically this double pole, double throw switch will on one side give me bass fuss and on the other side give me LPB1 booster. All right, so then let's talk about the electro distortion. Now this electric distortion is a fascinating circuit. It's a very kind of primitive and old school distortion circuit, but I think it has been modified and cloned in countless ways. I think specifically it gets a lot of attention, I think, with like the love pedal circuits. 
and um, many others, I'm sure. But again, if we take a look at this um, and compare and contrast it with what we were just talking about, okay, we don't have the one mag in input resistor here, that's fine. We can add that if we want. We've got our, our input capacitor that's providing coupling and cutting base depending on the value you set. Look, we've got a 2.2 meg resistor. That's very, very similar to the boost other than it is going to a little bit of a different spot. On this side, you've got a baseline resistor 3.3K, which is quite a bit lower than the bass fuss, more in line with the 10K. Now, some of that depends on the transistor that you use. But, you know, and then you've also got a gain pot in line that's provided. I, I currently have that right now. To, this is going to help bias the fuzz and also provide some kind of gain construction and control. You've got a slightly higher resistor here. Then you go to the coupling capacitor. That may also shave some base depending on where you're at. But then our new addition, and, and this version is, this is the Beavis Audio Trotsky Drive, which is kind of, I say it's an electro distortion, but it's got some tweaks. But then we run into our clipping diodes. So now this is different than the bass fuss. The clipping diodes were here, whereas now we've got them back here. And so I think I could just simply put these clipping diodes on the switch, and I could again use another one of these double pull, double throw switches, where I've got a diode on each one, and in the up position, they go nowhere, and in the down position, they go to ground. Um, or I could even probably just get away with a single, a single pearl switch and put this single switch right here to either send it to ground or send it nowhere. And then we go to a bright cut if we want, and then we go out to the volume control. So I think it would be pretty easy to add those clipping diodes. So, so basically what would need to happen, what I could have happen here is I got one switch, that can go from Baz Fuss to LPB1 Booster, and then I've got a second switch that can go from LPB1 Booster to ElectroDrive, and I could also even put it in Baz Fuss mode on the first switch and then put the clipping diodes in, so it's like a combination of Baz Fuss and ElectroDrive at the same time. To me, that's pretty exciting that I could get a lot of use out of that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is this. What you are looking at right now is the Baxendall Tone Stack Schematic. Now you've got an input and an output and a bunch of stuff in between. This, is, this ends up being two controls, bass, which is right here, and then treble, which is right here. And the Baxendall Tone Stack I like it a lot in theory because it could give you the potential to be pretty neutral or then it also could give you the ability to uh, give you boost and cut of actually all three bass, mid, and treble frequencies. You know, for example, if you increase the bass, increase the treble, the mid in relative terms is being cut or if you turn the bass way down, turn the treble way down, then the mid relatively is being boosted, and then you could increase your level to make up. Now, I think what I might need to experiment with, if I'm going to add this tone stack, first of all is the location of the tone stack. If we go back to our Trotsky drive here, I think what I might want to do is consider putting it here at the end of the circuit before the volume control. So right in here, I could ins I could have a switch that would insert the tone stack or take it out. And what I'm also not sure about is when you have a tone stack, you have a lot of loss in gain. Tone stacks just are inherently lossy. You have signal that is lost by the fact of it being run through the tone stack. So why don't I just make another LPB1 boost circuit? To go along with it. I could probably, I could potentially run it after as a makeup gain stage, and maybe I'll just make, what I'm even thinking is that I could make that whole side of it be on its own foot switch. So maybe I put this in a double pedal box, and on one side we've got the Baz Fuss and the LPB1 and even the switch for the, for the electro distortion, and then on the left, 
switch I could add will be a second boost circuit, which is being shaped pretty heavily by a tone stack. So in my mind, that would make this pedal kind of taking it from something that's extremely simple to something that is almost infinitely versatile. And I'm not really, you know, adding the second boosting stage and the tone stack is basically doubling, almost even tripling the complexity of the pedal, and I'm aware of that. But I really don't think that it's that terribly hard or challenging to do what I'm looking to do. So we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see how it goes. I'm probably going to take each of these one at a time. But if you guys have any input or any things that I should be aware of, I can't have been the first one to have this idea. So I'd really appreciate any input that you guys have to help guide me along the way. So thanks for tuning in. Let's keep moving forward. Thanks. Bye.